You might have something dangerous hiding in your electrical panel right now. Something that can overload wires, damage your appliances, or even shock you after the breaker's been turned off. And the worst part is, most homeowners and even some electricians don't even know the danger exists. So what is this mysterious electrical installation that can be so dangerous? Well, they're called multi-wire branch circuits, and if they're not installed correctly in your electrical panel or wired correctly at your outlets, they can be very dangerous. In this video, we'll cover what a multi-wire branch circuit is and how they work, why they were installed, code requirements for them, four ways that they can become dangerous, how to identify them in your electrical panel or at a receptacle, and things that you can do to make them safe. So let's jump right into it. What a multi-wire branch circuit is. A multi-wire branch circuit is simply a circuit that has two hot wires and they share one common neutral. That's it. But to really understand how they work and why they can become dangerous, let's take a look at how our electrical systems are actually supplied. Most commercial and industrial buildings are supplied with three-phase power. But our homes are different. We have single-phase power that's delivered in a configuration called a split-phase system. A lot of people think it's two-phase because we have two hot legs, but it's not. Both hot legs come from one single phase. So here's what's really happening. The transformer feeding our home has a single high-voltage hotline coming in on the primary. And on the secondary side, it has a center-tapped winding. That center tap becomes the neutral and the two ends of the winding become our two hot legs. Those two hot legs are 180 degrees out of phase with each other. That gives us about 240 volts between the two hot legs. About 120 volts between either hot leg and neutral and zero volts between neutral and ground since they're bonded together at the main panel or at the meter enclosure. That 180 degrees of separation between the hot legs is exactly what allows a multi-wire branch circuit to safely share one common neutral. This works because current on the neutral from one leg will be canceled out by the current on the neutral from the other leg. Here's an example. Let's say we have two 20 amp circuits with a shared neutral, which would be a multi-wire branch circuit. We have a toaster plugged in on one leg and a coffee maker plugged in on the other. The toaster is drawing 12 amps and the coffee maker is drawing 10 amps. Both circuits are within the 20 amp circuit rating, so we're good to go there. But how much current will we have on the neutral? Well, since it only carries the imbalance between the two legs, we will only have about two amps on the neutral. That's right, the neutral only carries the imbalance or the difference between the two hot legs. Before we move on to why these circuits can become dangerous, let's first talk about why they were installed in the first place. And the answer is, pretty simply, cost savings. You can run one three-wire cable rather than two two-wire cables. This saves one neutral wire and one ground wire. It can also save a little bit on labor as well since now you're running just one cable rather than two. I personally don't like them because they can become dangerous if they're not understood. We'll talk about the dangers in a minute, but first let's take a look at the five main code requirements for multi-wire branch circuits. Unfortunately, many of these circuits are not installed to current code. Article 210.4 covers multi-wire branch circuit requirements. 210.4a general basically tells us that they're considered multiple circuits and all wires in the circuit must come from the same panel board. 
210.4b disconnecting means. This tells us that the hot wires must be simultaneously disconnected. This is very important. We'll dive into that in a minute. Article 210.4c line to neutral loads. This tells us that multi-wire branch circuits can only supply line to neutral loads, not 240 volt line to line loads. But if we look at exception two, it says that they can supply line to line loads as long as the hot wires are simultaneously disconnected, which is already required. So I find this a bit redundant. Then we have 2104D grouping. This tells us that the hot and neutral wires must be grouped together. This can be done with wire markers, tape, or cable ties, but it's not required when the wires are run in a cable like Romex because the wires are already grouped together in the cable. There's one more important code requirement for multi-wire branch circuits, and it comes from Article 300.13b. It tells us that the neutral wire cannot depend on the device for connection. This means that the neutral wire must be spliced with a pigtail rather than wired through the device. So removing or replacing a receptacle does not open the neutral. This is really important because an open neutral on a multi-wire branch circuit can create a fire or even a shock hazard. Now that we understand how multi-wire branch circuits work and the code requirements, let's talk about the four ways that they can become dangerous. One of the biggest dangers comes from the way that your breakers are installed in your panel. Many older homes, even some not so old ones, will have multi-wire branch circuits that are fed from single pole breakers without a breaker tie. Remember Article 210.4b, all the hot wires must be disconnected simultaneously. If you separate breakers or replace a breaker without using a handle tie or a two pole breaker, you could create a serious shock hazard. Let me explain why. Some multi-wire branch circuits feed split receptacles. You may turn off one breaker, but it only cuts power to one receptacle. The second circuit feeding the other side of the receptacle may still be live. That can be a serious shock hazard. Before we move on to the other three dangers, I wanna take a minute to thank Ideal, the sponsor of today's video. See this outlet tester I'm using? It looks beat up because it is, but I've been using it for a couple of decades now and it still works fine. When I purchase electrical tools, I want quality and that's what you get from Ideal. Tools that will last. I just got this new multimeter a few months ago and I'm sure it's going to last decades as well. Probably longer than I'm going to last, if we're being honest. They offer everything from instrumentation like multimeters and circuit tracers, hand tools, conduit benders, fish tapes, even drill and tap sets and wire connectors. Anything you need, Ideal has you covered. You can find their products at all the major home improvement centers and electrical supply houses, but they're also available right on Amazon, which will deliver right to your door. I'll link all my tool recommendations down in the video description, or you can scan the QR code right here on the screen if you wanna check them out. Thanks again to Ideal for sponsoring this video. Okay, we talked about the first danger, which is a shock hazard caused from using single pole untied breakers. But there's another danger, actually a fire hazard caused from overloading the neutral. The two hot legs alternate to every other breaker down both sides of your electrical panel. Keeping breakers together ensures they're both on opposite legs, which is imperative. If the two breakers end up on the same leg in the panel instead of opposite legs, the neutral will carry the current from both circuits instead of just the imbalance. That can quickly exceed the neutral's impacity and create a fire hazard. 
If we go back to our previous example with the toaster and the coffee maker, the toaster was drawing 12 amps and the coffee maker was drawing 10 amps. But now the neutral would carry 22 amps rather than just the imbalance of 2 amps. If the circuits were fully loaded, the neutral could carry up to 40 amps. The breakers wouldn't trip because both circuits would be within their 20 amp rating. So it's super important that we keep our breakers together, either with a handle tie or a two pull breaker to eliminate overloading the neutral and a potential fire hazard. Danger number three, hidden shock hazard. Sometimes multi-wire branch circuits are wired to feed every other receptacle in a room. Instead of breaking the tab and supplying the top and bottom outlets from different legs. This is often the case in kitchens with GFCI receptacles which cannot be split. Let's say you decide to replace a GFCI receptacle in your kitchen. You're smart so you find the circuit breaker and turn it off. Then you take voltage readings with your multimeter and verify there's no power at the receptacle and you begin your work. Here's the danger. You'll have another hot wire in the box that doesn't connect to the receptacle. But even worse, you'll be working with the neutral wires which are carrying current for the other circuit. This can be very dangerous. That's another reason why breaker ties or two pole breakers are required. And danger number four, a failed neutral. A failed neutral on a multi-wire branch circuit can be catastrophic. If the neutral connection fails or is opened, the two circuits are now in a series. Depending on what's connected, voltage can increase on one circuit and drop on the other. This can burn up appliances or possibly even become a shock hazard. That's why NEC 313B specifically prohibits relying on the device yoke to carry the neutral for multi-wire branch circuits. The neutral has to be pigtailed. Opening the neutral when changing a receptacle could be dangerous if the other circuit was still energized. That's why tide breakers and pigtailed neutrals are required. So now we know a bit about multi-wire branch circuits and how they can be dangerous. But how can you identify whether you have a multi-wire branch circuit either at your panel or out at the receptacle? Look for two breakers that are tied together or a single two-pole breaker feeding multiple circuits like kitchen receptacles. You may have multi-wire branch circuits that are incorrectly installed on untied breakers. This is very common. Check for three-wire cables, black, red, white, plus the ground, entering the panel. That's often a multi-wire branch circuit. At the receptacle, if you turn off a breaker and open a receptacle and see a red or a black wire that's not connected to the receptacle, that could be a multi-wire branch circuit. Be sure to check for voltage on the top and bottom receptacle before you open the box. And if you see another circuit, a red or black wire inside the box, be sure to check that for voltage as well. Once you identify a multi-wire branch circuit that's possibly been incorrectly installed, you can make it safe with a few simple steps. Electrical work can be dangerous, so calling an electrician for help may be the best plan. But this is what I do to make them safe. Install a breaker tie or a two pole breaker. This is the easiest and safest solution. It ensures both hot legs are disconnected at the same time and it keeps the breakers on opposite legs so you won't overload the neutral. Pigtail the neutral. Make sure the neutral is spliced so it doesn't depend on the receptacle yoke. This prevents opening the neutral when changing devices so you stay safe. If you're still here, you obviously care about electrical safety and that's why you're going to want to watch this video next where I cover grounding and bonding mistakes people make with portable generators. Remember to check out my tool list linked down in the video description or you can scan the QR code on the screen. I'm John from Backyard Maine. I really appreciate you guys being here and I'll see you on the next one.